Welcome to Netwatchers TV and Radio. And in this episode of This Day in News, People's National Party elections. Four picked Crawford, Phillips, McNeil, Paulwell all voted as PNP's vice president. Condolence book to be opened for the late Easton Douglas at NHT. National Housing Trust. Stay away from our students. Jamaica Teachers Association says it consistently warned teachers. Manafort strikes deal to cooperate with U.S. Special Counsel. Isaac dissipates. Severe weather alert remains in place. Hurricane Florence triggers disaster declaration for the state of North Carolina. And today in mini sports. Holy Trinity High School made to work against Pembroke Hall High in the Manning Cup. All these and more in the news. And now for the news. People's National Party PNP delegates have booted two sitting vice presidents from the second tier leadership of the party and have ushered in three new faces following today's internal election. Longtime Vice President Dr. Fenton Ferguson suffered a, a hard fall in the hotly contested election at the National Arena in St. Andrew. So too did Dr. Angela Brown Burke, who has served for two terms as Vice President. The winners are as follows Damien Crawford, 1,973 votes, Michael Phillips, 1,782 votes. Wicca McNeil, 1,766 votes. Philip Paulwell, 1,645 votes. The losers were as follows. Angela Brown Burke, 1,577 votes. Fenton Ferguson, 1,307 votes. Some 3,090 delegates were eligible to vote and 2,513 or 81% turned out. PNP General Secretary Julian Robinson announced the winners after nearly three hours of ballot counting. Today's election closes two months of intense campaigning among the six contenders. It was a good election and I want to congratulate all the candidates, says Robinson. Crawford's support had sparked excitement even before the announcement of the results. Forward with Crawford. Forward with Crawford, the supporters clad in red shouted while security officers moved to secure the counting location. There was also support for Michael Phillips, whose father, Dr. Peter Phillips, is the PNP's president. A condolence book for former cabinet minister and member of parliament, Easton Douglas, OJCD, will be opened at the head offices of the National Housing Trust, NHT, located on Park Boulevard in New Kingston. At the same time, the Jamaica Information Center says the official funeral service for the late housing minister will be held next Thursday at the St. Andrew Parish Church located in Halfway Tree. He will be laid to rest at the Dorothy's Anglican Church Cemetery located in Old Harbor, St. Catherine. JIS, Jamaica Information Service, says the condolence book for Douglas will be placed in the lobby area at the NHT head office and will be opened from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Wednesday next week. In addition, it says condolence books will also be opened at Jamaican overseas missions in the United States, cities of Washington, New York and Miami and as well as in Toronto, Canada and London in the United Kingdom. Douglas, 81 years old, died at his St. Andrew home on August 26th after a long battle with cancer. Douglas was a member of parliament for St. Andrew's Southeast 1989 until 2002 when he retired from politics and served as Minister of Health, the Public Service as well as Environment and Housing. The Jamaica Teachers Association JTA says it consistently warned both male and female teachers to stay away from their students. The reminder comes as a Trinidadian national currently teaching at a corporate area junior high school faces a number of charges in the death of 13-year-old 
Shania Ray, whose charred remains were found in a house in Mona, St. Andrew in July. He is also facing sex-related charges involving the teenager. Secretary General of the JTA, Byron Farkerson, says the leadership of the 25,000-member union does not get frequent reports of teachers being involved in sexual relations with students. Farkerson indicated too the JTA does not get involved after the allegations are made public. Once it goes into the public space, most times it becomes a criminal activity and we don't get involved with that, he said. Neither do we seek defense for criminal activities once teachers get involved with students, he added. Farkerson says teachers have a duty of care to their students and should not be involved sexually or otherwise getting too close to our students. The JTA denounces, condemns that kind of behavior, Farkerson told the local gleaner. He however acknowledged that if a teacher is accused of being involved with a student, the JTA has to come to their defense, but defense doesn't mean agreement, he pointed out. Paul Manafort, the former campaign chairman for United States President Donald Trump, has agreed to cooperate with the investigators probing alleged Russian meddling in the 2016 U.S. presidential election as part of a plea deal. As part of the agreement with special counsel Robert Mueller, Manafort pleaded guilty yesterday to conspiracy against the U.S. and conspiracy to obstruct justice in a federal court in Washington, D.C. He remains in custody. The charges are related to his political consultancy work he did for pro-Russian politicians in the Ukraine, largely predating his role with the Trump campaign. The agreement avoids a second trial for money laundering and other charges following his conviction last month on eight counts of fraud, bank fraud, and failing to disclose bank accounts. Manafort faces up to 10 years in prison under the deal and will also have to forfeit four of his properties and the contents of several bank accounts. Manafort's attorney Kevin Downing said his client wanted to make sure that his family was able to remain safe and live a good life. Prosecutors also indicated that deadlock charges from last month's trial in Virginia will be dismissed if there is successful cooperation with the special counsel's investigation. In a statement after the agreement was announced, the White House spokesman Sarah Saunders said this had absolutely nothing to do with the president or his victorious 2016 presidential campaign. It is totally unrelated. Tropical Storm Isaac has dissipated. The Meteorological Service of Jamaica has reported. However, the Met Service says the severe weather alert for all parishes from Sunday to Monday remains in effect. At 4 a.m., the downgraded weather system was located 730 kilometers east-southeast of Kingston, according to forecasters. The Met Service says maximum sustained winds are near to 35 kilometers per hour, with higher gusts likely. However, it warns that the remnants of Isaac are expected to produce occasional heavy rains and gusty winds across the island while moving westward ac across the Central and Western Caribbean during the next few days. United States President Donald Trump has issued a disaster declaration for North Carolina where Tropical Storm Florence has left six people dead. Officials say nearly one million households in the Carolinas have no electricity and warn that the worst of the storm is far from over. The declaration by Trump, which was announced by the White House today, frees up federal funding, including grants for property repairs and low-cost loans to cover uninsured losses. The White House says Trump may travel to the region next week. Forecasters in the U.S. say top sustained winds from the weather system have weakened to 80 km per hour, but are expected to cause more flash flooding. According to report, some towns have already recorded recorded over two feet of rainfall and forecasters say the storm could dump up to 3.5 feet of rainfall in some areas. Reports say five of the deaths occurred in North Carolina. Among them were a mother and her child who were killed after a tree fell on their home last evening. And in mini sports, Holy Trinity coach Devon Anderson said his team made yesterday's Group G is a Digicel Manning Cup game against Pembroke Hall High much harder than it actually was as they labored to a 3-1 win. Philip Lawrence's second half brace saw Anderson's team to victory at Belchung Oval after Rakish Mundell 
had cancelled out Dylan McEnnis's 12-minute opener. Anderson said his team got indisciplined after taking the lead and were nearly made to pay by a hard-working Pembroke High School unit. And in other matches, Dunwon lost 3-0 to Calabar, Eltham defeated Charlie Smith 1 goal to nil. Jonathan Grant lost 2 goals to 1 to Meadowbrook, Norman Manley lost 2-0 to Camperdown, Edith Dalton James lost 4-0 to Woolmers, Waterford and Jose Marte were tied at the end of 90 minutes. And that is all for this day in news, a Netwatchers TV and radio production. Until our next episode, big up.